It's my great pleasure to present Gunnar Wolf, who is going to be covering what you need to do to uh, have DebCon 12 at your location. Go ahead. Hey. Well, uh, so by now you, uh, you will most know that the DebCon is a great and fun uh, event. So the thing is, each year we have to decide what, uh, what comes next, where to go, how to do it, how does this work? Ah. Okay. So, uh, well, why do we do uh, this? This is the list of uh, topics we, we're covering. Why do we do DevConf? What does a location have to have in order to uh, hold a conference or to be candidated? Uh, what's the timeline for the decision process? What I've been telling to several people, today we're not deciding anything, we're just doing a first uh, pre a set of presentations, and we will be deciding well uh, along the, the following year. Uh, and uh, if we have them, uh, some proposals. So, well, why do we do this? First of all, be, uh, because we all love Debian, and it's a very uh, serious and professional thing to do to, to hold a conference where people work for 20 hours a day and try to get some sleep after uh, playing Mao for the remaining four. Uh, well, uh, that's, that, that's the main formal reason for it. Besides that, well, we hold it because it's great fun, because, uh, well, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we want to provide a, a place for uh, uh, Debian developers and Debian related and Debian interested people to work together, to get together, and uh, to share experiences and to do all those things we cannot do online, uh, which is our, well, of course, our main uh, means of uh, uh, coordination. Yep. Uh, many people are surprised that uh, mostly the, the, f the first comers to DevConf that were actually not, not that productive, uh, most of us, during DevConf, but then again, th this is what fuels the, the work during the, the, the rest of the, the year. It's a, a great motivator and a, a great location to start projects and to start talking towards what we're going to do the next uh, months. Then educate people. I don't re exactly like the wording of this, but, but the thing is sharing uh, some ideas, sharing some uh, uh, prospects of uh, things we want to implement or uh, or spreading uh, how are we uh, carrying forward uh, our tasks yep so so that more people can can use the new fungal stuff it's always more attractive to see uh, see it in a demo than to read the documentation <coughs> uh, well as i said uh, so socialization is a very important part i, <coughs> I have uh, come to see debian more as a a social group with a technical outcome than the opposite, which is true for most uh, software projects. Yep, where as a group with a very strong uh, sh social ties, many of us have uh, come to over five DevComs, and uh, that really makes it. Uh, we all look forward to uh, that time of year, so we can well, uh, yeah, work a lot and meet the friends, and th this uh, helps helps a lot uh, knitting together the. The, the network uh, uh, throughout the rest of the year. And yeah, boost the motivation, as I said. Uh, uh, this is a motivator for wha what goes next. Then, and well, uh, this is uh, put at lower priority uh, as a result of uh, discussions we had uh, uh, for a long time, of course, what is uh, DevConf meant to be? What's our uh, uh, perspective for, for working on this? Yep, it's somewhat less priority, but it's still very important. Uh, to bo boost uh, local Debian communities. Uh, I know th that at several countries where we have uh, had, uh, we, we have held uh, DevConf, uh, this has uh, directly increased the uh, local involvement in Debian, uh, local involvement in free software, and uh, even the, the success of uh, free software uh, in, uh, as it's seen as so something bigger, as, as something more professional. Uh, when say local authorities get to see 300 uh, individuals from all over the world working for two weeks. Yeah, of course it's very important to have some fun in real life. Uh, it's a different kind of uh, uh, interaction than what, what we usually have. 
And yeah, well, uh, this is not a goal, but a by result, uh, which is also very good. That uh, thanks to our sponsors, which are each year very generous, and uh, even in the most expensive places <coughs> like this one, uh, have managed to cover for all of uh, the expenses for all of the people who request free, uh, uh, free food, free accommodation, even uh, travel sponsorship. Yep. It's uh, a bit of a payment for our uh, w uh, work as volunteers during the year. Of course, it's not a, a in money, but in, in specious payment. And uh, well, it's a nice uh, extra we, we, can, we can give uh, Debian contributors. Uh, and well, what's even more interesting than that is that so many people, uh, even being uh, uh, core contributors, uh, decide, well, uh, I don't want to cost the project any money, I, I will be funding myself. Since we started uh, like being uh, more public about uh, our finances, which are, are always tight, never too bad, never too, too, uh, too, too good, well, uh, each year more people have uh, decided to pay for their stays, which is also great. Okay, what does a, a proposed uh, location have to have in, in order to uh, be candidate for DevConf? A location must have a local team, a strong group of, uh, yeah, a group of people, say at, at least some five people who, who can commit to work together. They do not have to be Debian related, they just have to be locals and co uh, committed uh, to work to, uh, towards uh, this uh, as a free software conference. Yeah, but uh, yeah, manpower is uh, fundamental for this. Uh, they have to choose a city, town, spa, uh, resort, uh, hot by the sea, whatever. Uh, but uh, it doesn't have to be chosen by now. Uh, but it, it has to be chosen the, uh, the earliest possible so we can, well, yeah, look at something more concrete. Yeah, uh, saying uh, uh, just a country, well, doesn't, uh, doesn't give us any real insight on how this is. Conference facilities, <coughs> say if you want to ho uh, host it at a place where there are large universities with dormitories as here, or do you want to, ho uh, to host it at a hotel as it, uh, has been done in uh, several Latin American places? Yeah, uh, it's uh, very important to, to look at that point. Food, uh, what, uh, w uh, what uh, will we be gi uh, giving people? How expensive are meals in, in this country or place? Uh, do we have uh, uh, enough uh, like for considering people with the dietary restrictions, like vegetarians, vegans, people with allergies? Yeah, uh, that's a, a very hard point to, to get in some places. And uh, of course, uh, if it's going to be a two-week uh, two uh, meeting, we have to have some variety because people don't want to eat uh, rice with chicken for two, days, uh, for two, uh, for two weeks in, in a row. Uh, network connectivity, we need good network coverage, uh, as we've seen here. Even the best uh, networks, like uh, Columbia's, have uh, given us problems. We have really suffered for, uh, at places with bad uh, network connectivity. So it's very, I mean, we cannot work without a network. So it's, even, uh, it's almost meaningless to have a conference where we cannot work. <coughs> uh, we are uh, setting like a, a minimum uh, connectivity uh, getting uh, 10 to 20 megabits uh, symmetric uh, links. So, uh, so yeah, uh, it does, uh, we cannot work with, say, DSL uplinks or, or uh, cellular networks. Yep. Uh, special DevConf rooms. We, we want our spaces to be as exclusive as possible. This, this has been a bit of a problem here, and uh, people who have been at uh, previous conferences know that it's very nice that uh, at DevConf you can trust that you can leave your computer anywhere. You can leave your valuables. I mean, there's a very high degree of trust in this community. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very desirable. We, uh, we are not, uh, we, uh, we do not have to worry about uh, our, our stuff. Of course, it's not so necessary. As we see here, nothing has happened, uh, uh, given we are in a large university full of uh, people. But it's uh, good to have. Accommodation has to be as close as possible to the work uh, spaces, yeah, uh, to allow for uh, late night uh, hacking, uh, to, uh, to allow for uh, uh, going to a room for something. And yeah, uh, it can be, uh, I don't know, like here, a couple of blocks away, it's fine. 
but uh, we should re uh, really not look into having, a, I, I don't know, a, a hotel and a conference facility uh, 10 blocks away or so, which ha has, be, uh, has happened, but uh, it has uh, like disrupted our activities. Fun and free time activities, yeah, because we're not only here for the work. We, we well, yesterday we had the day trip, and you will acknowledge uh, it's uh, the social part is very very important, and local sponsors. Uh, we have worked with uh, local sponsors, giving us money. That's the most flexible thing, but also uh, we have acknowledged uh, local sponsors as people who can provide either lent equipment or uh, cheap services or for free services, yeah. But w w we need to get some things local. Uh, we, we cannot uh, expect to, to bring everything from abroad. This time, for example, we had a large uh, uh, amount of stress uh, for the video team because the microphones were stuck in the customs waiting uh, to be uh, okayed. Uh, so we want to have as much infrastructure as possible locally. Uh, okay, I, I would add to this, to this uh, having a, b a hosting this at a place where where we can buy whatever is needed for not too uh, n uh, not too hard. I mean, when we were in Mexico, we were uh, in a well in a village like 30 minutes away from the state capital. And there were no computer stores nearby. So, I mean, for very simple things, yes. But if you wanted to get anything a bit more spe specialized, you had to make a one-hour trip and back. Well, uh, yeah, one uh, round trip. So that's completely suboptimal. We, we want to hold it uh, in a place where if I need something now, 20 minutes later, I have it. OK. So uh, we want to follow a similar process to what we have uh, done past years. Yep. We have, starting today, uh, we still have uh, approximately six months for uh, proposals to uh, show up or to decline. Say, uh, I, I was just uh, talking with uh, Anarkat and uh, got him mixed into all this. Uh, the thing is, he's, uh, he's running for Canada. Yes, even if he doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, we have six months for him to confirm or for others to confirm or to say, no, uh, we, we don't want to make noise, we are withdrawing the proposal. So, but uh, for December 31st, uh, we want to have the final list of locations. Uh, uh, we, we will do the decision on April 1st, and it's not going to be a joke decision. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will tra uh, try to do it uh, earlier, but uh, the, the final... Uh, the final deadline is uh, April 1st. This leaves us with about uh, 14 months to organize, which is uh, clearly enough. Uh, we have a checklist in the wiki. Uh, I, I don't have the link here, but uh, uh, look for a uh, DevConf uh, checklist, uh, uh, where, you, uh, where you should see a list of uh, points we want to uh, t uh, take care of and their uh, priority. So that's a great document if you want to start uh, putting uh, together your, your proposal. Uh, we use this method for DevConf 7, 8, 10, and 11. Yeah, previous DevConfs uh, were like uh, decided the uh, person-to-person interactions, and DevConf 9, the, Extrema the Extremadura proposal was so strong that it had no competition. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, uh, it, this uh, process has worked uh, very well, even though, as always, uh, as there are people pushing for what they consider to be best, there's uh, always somebody who, who ends up a, a, a bit uh, disappointed because they didn't win. Okay, yeah, but we're, we're people and we're expected to deal with uh, frustration. Only one proposal can win. And uh, yeah, we can change the schedule, but we should agree on this uh, soon. So as far as I know, uh, Brazil, uh, the Brazil team was proposing uh, with two possible locations, uh, Belo Horizonte or again Porto Alegre, if I'm not, not mistaken. No? Curitiba, yeah, Curitiba. Uh, Central America, I, I, I have been uh, personally pushing that community uh, to, to try to get more involved into Debian. They, are, uh, they have a great local team and I think they can get good facilities, but uh, I am 
still a bit uncertain. I, I can talk a bit uh, about what I've seen uh, uh, after the other presentations. Uh, <coughs> Canada, uh, uh, Canada is uh, presenting Montreal or something else, we, we shall see. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I just added Canada, so uh, disregard the, the inconsistency in my slide. <laughs> uh, uh, so, well, well, we can have a short presentation by each group if you have it. If you don't, well, just uh, say hi, and uh, I am submitting myself for public humiliation. <laughs> so, uh, and well, uh, continue having fun. So, uh, does the Brazilian team have something prepared? Yeah. One, two, hello, oh. So my name, my name is Felipe. I am from Brazil. Uh, I am leading the, the bid for now. Um, and here are some slides. The, the main idea here is to make it official that Brazil is a candidate. I'm going to show a little bit about the two cities that are the strongest cities and why they are the strongest cities. So, um, this is Brazil. Uh, the two cities are Curitiba and Belo Horizonte, which is um, still southern. Uh, they, are, they are 
Belo Horizonte is above the tropic, but Curitiba, no. Uh, the main entrance will be Sao Paulo. We will speak about that in a moment. So I just want you to have a good idea of uh, where we're planning to have it. No, none of the cities are in the beach, so they are a little bit far from it. And this, this hopefully gives you a picture. And we are going to go green and yellow. The main language in the country is Brazilian Portuguese. It is different from Portuguese. Um, although Brazilians and Portuguese can understand each other very well, for, specifically for computer, it is a little bit different, more or less in the same sense that Spanish from Spain and Spanish from Latin America um, differs on some certain terms and, and, and certain um, options. One of the things is that for Portuguese in Brazil, we feel that if Portuguese from Portugal speaks fast, we can't really follow them. Uh, we are most of it on UTC3, so it is um, the two cities are under this time zone. We held it in winter, so it is this time zone that will be in effect. Uh, our money is real. Uh, this is more or less what we have in the last years regarding money. Um, so this gives you a picture of how much it will cost. Um, our main our main power is 110. Uh, we are right now in the middle of a plug mess. The government changed to a new plug standard, which is a standard published by European Union that should be the standard for the European community in a few years. Uh, we are kind of ahead. Um, so it is already standard in Brazil. <laughs> and it is the same plug as the Switzerland one, the, the three. <laughs> Yes. And and okay, can you change the slides? <laughs> and the other, but we still have the main plug. Our main plug is the U.S. plug. So this is still present in a lot of places. And only the new buildings and these things will have the new plug. And for I think three or four years, which covers that conf we should also have both plugs in everywhere. So about visas, which is a very big point for everybody, uh, Europeans don't need a visa. They have 90 days uh, for, for traveling around. It includes conference, because our conference is not a business conference of uh, classification. Uh, the Brazilian government applies the reciprocity principle, so if you're country asks a visa from a Brazilian, Brazil asks a visa from a citizen uh, coming from that country, which, for instance, applies to Americans, uh, to United States of America. Um, it is much easier to apply for visas. It is not, uh, it's, it tends to be fast. 15 days should be enough for most um, of the countries that require visa. Um, South America is fine, Central America most of it, Mexico also requires visa from Brazilians, so uh, Brazilian will, Brazil will require a visa from them. I am not sure about all of the countries, but for the main uh, mass of Deben developers, that's, that's the main idea. The prices for the visas are more or less equivalent under the same principle, so if it's like $100 to get a United States visa, should be the same if you want to get a Brazilian visa from the United States. So now, you, some of you may be thinking, we already have a DebConf, so it's the first time that a country is reapplying after, of course, France, which held two in a row. Um, that's true. Porto Alegre was the city. Uh, it's very southern. Um, the DebConf 4, and here is one of the things, a few things that I want to highlight. Debcon 14 was 11 people, nine local, only one Debian developer amongst them, and three of those people are already in the Debcon 12 team. So we want to keep the experience that they had. Um, we had 162 attendees from 25 different countries, and we had eight sponsors. Uh, at that time. 
this, these companies, uh, four of them were money inside Brazil, four of them were international money. Um, Debcon 4 had great things happening. Deb Women was born there. Uh, this is their classical, there is no cabal picture. And we introduced the concept of day, day trip. E the attendees went to the mountains, Gramado. Um, it's in the final report from Pablo, which led the bid at that time, that it was, uh, it was a mixed feeling about the attendees that some didn't like, it was too touristic, some loved it, and, but it seems to get uh, along the lines and everybody now likes it. So why should we repeat a country? First of all, Brazil is not exactly a small country. We are the 50th largest country in size and in population. Uh, so it's like 80 million uh, square kilometers, 193 million people. Uh, so if you look, it is uh, Belo, Horizonte, uh, Belo Horizonte, the state of Belo Horizonte, which is Minas Gerais, is larger than France. Uh, Paraná, which is the state of Curitiba, is larger uh, than a few countries in Europe. And why not Sao Paulo, which is the largest city in Brazil? Um, Sao Paulo should be comparable to New York City uh, in size, but we don't have the same subway system. It is not as effective. Sao Paulo is suffering hard time from the traffic. It is much worse than it's in New York City. Um, and we don't have a local team. So although we have like 20 Debian Dem developers around there and a lot of Debian users, they, they don't like work together, it's not being promoted, and, and we, that may change now that we became official, but we still think that it will be a nightmare for logistics, so, um, for going and buy something or for uh, providing uh, infrastructure, and it probably may be more expensive also. So, Belo Horizonte is the first city. This is the state of Minas Gerais. This is the city inside of the state. Um, and here are some pictures. This is the airport. Uh, this is one of the largest soccer stadiums uh, in Brazil. This is the, 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 city, the view of the city. Belo Horizonte is the 60th large, largest city in Brazil. Uh, this is the, it is about 2, 3 million people, if you count the, the great area of the city. Um, They have, sub they have train systems for, for transportation. Um, these are some uh, tourist pictures. This is a famous cathedral. Um, this is another church. There, it is a very strong region uh, related with religion. Um, I, there are Mineiros here, which is who born is in Belo Horizonte. Mark is here. Okay. So, he can answer questions and explain more because I'm not from the city. I just collect some pictures. Um, and we are not trying to defend the beads today. So uh, this is the um, main, this is the fl symbol flower, and now this is the symbol monkey. This is the Federal University on the city. So both cities have federal universities. Here comes Curitiba. This is the Paraná State, where there's also, some of you know, Itaipu, the largest power plant. Uh, but it's across uh, the country. Uh, it's across the state. Curitiba is like here. Foz is like here. So it is 700 kilometers. Uh, there is Curitiba. And here are some pictures from the city. This is the airport. This is this view of the city. It is the seventh largest city, so it's right after, um, right after Belo Horizonte. Here are some pictures. This is the famous botanical garden. This is the wireframe opera, uh, which is all tubular structure. This is the winter in Curitiba. It is 
Curitiba is 800 meters above the ocean level, so it kind of get colder, not, not as cold as some uh, north countries. But this is one of the last uh, architecture from Oscar Niemeyer. This is parks. Curitiba has, has a lot of parks. This is the Federal University. This is the oldest university in Brazil. It is of, um, erected in 1912, so it's about, it will be 100 years if DebConf will be in Brazil. Um, and I think the last picture now is our transportation system, which we don't have subways. Curitiba has too many rivers under the city. Now there is technology to do it, but there wasn't. 30 years ago, so we use these large buses. They are, uh, they have these articulations. Um, they have special uh, streets that they run alone, and they run very fast through the city. So transportation, it is considered one of the best transportation systems inside Brazil. So this is uh, an old army building that is now a theater. And it, it's also an auditorium, so it can hold conference. That's why the picture is there. So both cities are state capitals, which makes it easier for um, a lot of the points that we have. They are the 16th lar and 7th largest city. Both of them have federal university, and that's important because all the federal universities are connected to the largest backbone in the country. Uh, so connectivity from the universities would be possible and would be viable for uh, a small amount of price because usually universities are very uh, kind with free software projects and we wouldn't need to buy it, but buy it is also a possibility if, if you have to, if you decide to go to a hotel or something like that. Um, good connectivity both for airports and networks. Uh, the airports would be another leg inside Brazil, so most of you will arrive um, through Sao Paulo, and then this is just another leg, uh, would be another uh, hour to Curitiba or, or to Belo Horizonte, and it really doesn't add anything to the price. It would be something like $50 in an international trip price, so that shouldn't affect the price. Uh, both city has strong local teams, experienced ones in, a, in, in organizing events, uh, and we kind of support each other. Uh, so Brazil, we have a kind of uh, national organization team. Doesn't matter where, what, what, the ci what city wins, we will move, uh, we'll go there a few days before, we will keep traveling around to make sure things work. But both these cities have something like 15 people that is involved with free software. Um, Belo Horizonte has more Debian developers than Curitiba, but both cities have a strong community around Debian, so that should be um, a good initial first step because we have like 15 people to start from. And um, we have knowledge of DebConf, uh, I'm involved with DebConf since DebConf 6 in Mexico. Um, I've been part of the Orga team since DebConf 7, so I'm well aware of the process, the steps, the dates, um, all the checklist procedures, how the bids are evaluated, and all that stuff. Um, we also have uh, other Brazilian that are volunteers for video team and other tasks inside so they know um, things that are required for video team, which is another big concern um, about having the, a good infrastructure for them. So this is, this is one thing that uh, we believe it's very good for Brazil. We already held one, and we have people that are still involved. So it, is, it, it, should, we, we should, uh, it should be easier for us to cover all the topics and our checklist. Uh, and in preparation for that, we started the process of holding mini DebConfs in Brazil. So this year we will hold uh, the first mini DebConf in Brazil. Um, this has the main purpose to attract people, um, get people together around the idea that we will try to have DebConf 12. And this is also to try to have more people involved in Debian. Uh, so 
we are aiming for November to the first one, and next year it will happen probably around Fisley, the big event that happened in Porto Alegre. In Porto Alegre. So this is the main, this is the main, um, this is the main uh, points for Brazil. Um, we we are still collecting a lot of data to prepare the page. Um, so what we would do is that we decided we will proceed with something similar that the International DebConf does. We will try to have both cities fulfill all the checklists. Then we will hold internal meetings to evaluate which one's best, and then and then decided based on that. So we will have the best possible bid uh, inside Brazil to help EBCONF. And another thing that I want to highlight is that it's really, really different. We really want to, to move away from Porto Alegre because we really want you all to see um, another part of the country. It's a large country, so as we move north, things really change. And one question that may arise is why not rainforest or, or a beach or something like that? The rainforest, the, the, the biggest cap, capital city in the rainforest is Manaus. Um, but they, even the locals agree that they don't have the network to accept us. Network is very expensive and it's very unreliable. So uh, that's, that's one of the main problems. And the second one is traveling even for Brazilians, would be very expensive. So we can't really uh, have a DebConf there yet. But the other, the other cities should be uh, a possibility. We will promote that inside Brazil to have more candidates, and then we will try. But we believe those cities are the strongest ones. So that's it. Uh, I don't know if we have time for a question, Gunnar, if another. OK. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, okay. Okay. I didn't want you to look at me. Um, so uh, I, well, some of us had the idea of hosting uh, DebConf in Montreal. Uh, we haven't got anything prepared whatsoever. I just made up a quick list of uh, ideas and things why we could do that in Montreal. I think a lot of people are enthusiastic about it. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in Montreal would be to uh, have a strong local team to organize it. Uh, I'm a Debian maintainer since a f little, <laughs> and there are a f very few Debian people in Montreal, but I think we have a strong open source community. Uh, there is a canonical office in Montreal, so there's a lot of Ubuntu people also that could maybe help, uh, that is subject to debate. Uh, but Montreal is a very interesting city in general for to host conferences. It's a world-class world city. It's the second biggest city in Canada. Uh, it's bilingual, so it's not a problem if you don't speak French. You can uh, talk to us in English, and usually people respond very well in Montreal. Outside of Montreal, in Quebec, it's kind of more complicated, but in general in Canada, Canada is a bilingual country, at least on paper, and when it's not completely bilingual, it's because it's English. <laughs> um, so yeah, Montreal is this kind of mix between an American and European city, so it makes it very interesting for people to visit. Uh, we have a silly beach on the river, <laughs> sort of. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a very open city, uh, and we have, uh, well, a lot of technological uh, companies and infrastructures in Montreal. So there's shops and all this usual stuff you get in a big city. Um, it's quite inexpensive for the city it is. I mean, usually people expect uh, such a city to be more expensive for rents and all this stuff. But Montreal is known as being very inexpensive. And it's a kind of a big, small city or a small, big city. So you have all the advantages, uh, advantages of a big city, but you have the feeling of it being in a, fo a small, friendly city. So it's very, uh, it's very good for that. Um, 
We have good technical expertise. I work with uh, an organization, a nonprofit that's called Kumbit.org that uses and develops uh, Debian, but also other free software. And we have good expertise with networking, and we have a strong uh, Wi-Fi community that can provide, probably provide, <laughs> um, uh, infrastructure at a conference. Um, what else is there? Um, yeah, there are a few Linux user groups, PHP user groups, things like that. Uh, we have a very good transit system in Montreal. It's not as developed as New York because, well, Montreal is kind of smaller in terms of population size, but uh, it's very clean metro system. Montreal is a very also secure city and friendly city so that you don't get mugged when you get out of your conference with your laptop. Um, and we have uh, cheap bicycle rentals from the city so you can get a bicycle for a day uh, and it's like five bucks. Um, and there are a lot of festivals during the summer and it's very, uh, very friendly. The only problem there is in Canada these days is that they have started changing the rules for visas, so it's a bit more complicated for some countries uh, to get into the country, whereas before a lot of people didn't need visas, like Mexico and Czech Republic now require visa. What? Okay, but anyways, I... Um, it's it's still uh, much easier in my mind to get to the Canada than the U.S. So it's a big uh, compromise between the two, a good compromise. So I'm not sure I will run a full uh, proposal by uh, December, but I think it's important to have an alternative uh, and another option. And if people want to help in, well, they're welcome to uh, come and see me. Otherwise, I'll be probably working on this uh, for to submit a proposal. Okay, and uh, well, I'll talk a little bit about uh, why we are also pushing for Central America. Uh, none of them were able to come here, maybe be, uh, partly because uh, well, they, uh, some of them have been denied the U.S. visa, and some of them prefer not to apply because well, uh, the Central American community is amazing, but it's a very young community. I was uh, in Nicaragua uh, last year for their first uh, Central American fr uh, free software uh, meetup. Yeah, it was an amazing thing. First of all, it's a very young community. Most people are around 20 to 25, uh, but they managed to, to do something logistically amazing, which was, uh, well, to hold a 100 people conference at a, well, a quite decent hotel uh, for for three days at $80 per person, all inclusive. Uh, that's not the location I would choose for us because it's uh, in a smaller town and it has all the disadvantages uh, we, we have uh, suffered in the past. But, uh, the, well, the Nicaraguan people are very, very much willing to hold the uh, ADEPCONF in Managua. They are putting together a proposal and they are assuring me that uh, in their universities, which do have a uh, Dormitories, uh, it is, uh, <clears throat> they have good enough in infrastructure uh, for us. I will be, uh, I, I mean, I will check that up and uh, of course uh, they, they will be presenting this. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't uh, mean to, uh, to do a presentation for them as I don't uh, really know the insights of their process and the places they are uh, considering. Uh, Central America, so it's a very cheap place uh, where we can go uh, and have very good facilities. It has a very good, uh, I mean, uh, not even the country has been decided, but they have very good uh, tourist facilities. Uh, Nicaragua is uh, very interesting as it is, well, uh, on one side, it's the safest country in the region. Uh, you, ha you may have uh, heard the horror stories of ma mainly in Salvador with the Maras, uh, which, yes, uh, at least for us who don't, don't live there, uh, scares us away. And uh, well, talking to, uh, uh, to him, well, it seems it's real, uh, the, uh, the horror stories. But, uh, well, Nicaragua seems to be a very safe place. We are also talking with, well, people in uh, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Panama also want to hold it. They will, uh, but they are acting as a single entity, yeah? The six uh, countries in Central America are in a very interesting integration process. So we are talking about one community. Uh, uh, regarding the visas, they don't require visas for anybody which is a great thing. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not fun being a citizen of a, 
uh, of a country which others don't like. So the, uh, if that's the reason many of them didn't come, well, uh, they, nobody will have that problem going there. Uh, well, uh, and it has beautiful places around it. The, the three times I've been to Central America, it's always you want to stay more because uh, it's amazing uh, all the richness they have. Uh, I don't know if you, if you want to add something uh, regarding your region. Do you, w w do you want to add something I'm not, I didn't say regarding the region? No, uh, the region is diverse. Hi, I'm from El Salvador. And, uh, yeah, Gunnar had a reason about the, the, the facility from, from Central America, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Nicaragua. And for example, uh, Nicaragua is a, is a younger team and El Salvador is, is, a, is a little older, but uh, mm, uh, some control is uh, the, uh, the group from Central America is not very involved in, in Debian. So maybe we can uh, host a, a bell conf and, and work together, uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Guatemala, but uh, maybe we need to be more involved with Debian and maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, the security is a, uh, maybe can be a, a contra, but it depends on the city. So uh, Managua is a really uh, uh, safe play, and El Salvador uh, to have uh, other cities can be a, a hostel, but uh, maybe we need to more involve in Debian for for try to to host a a, a, a welcome and and work together or are, are not a, a a country maybe work together a uh, Central America people. Okay, so we still have a couple of minutes. I don't know if uh, any of you has questions regarding the. Okay, so do you? So just a quick comment about mini comps. Um, they're a lot of fun and they're a good way to gain experience to organize a dev comp, a full dev comp. So um, there's a few upcoming. There's one in India in August for a couple of days in the early August. There's also one in November at FOSS Asia in Vietnam. Um, hopefully some of you might be interested in coming to those. Uh, that's, uh, that's right. And is this working? Yeah. OK. And uh, yeah, by, by the way, the Central America community held a mini dev conf. I was among the planners, but in the end couldn't attend because of uh, well, scheduling problems. But if you want to talk about how that was, look for Anto. Uh, yeah, from uh, well, the, the Spanish group that uh, made the uh, DevConf 9. He spent a year in Panama, and uh, he organized a mini DevConf there, which well, uh, which is helping uh, to get the more involvement from the Central Americans. But well, anyway, yep. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, so uh, again, this is uh, nothing definitive. Uh, we can still have more candidacies and. Of course, any of the current candidacies, candidacies can drop. And uh, well, I, I hope uh, this uh, leads to a nice debate. And uh, we, ha well, uh, we have uh, good bits, and that will lead to a very good Dev DevConf 12. So uh, continue enjoying, and thank you, thank you for being here.